From virtual to real, Nissan presents GT Academy Race to Dubai. Over the past few months, a selection of Nissan's youngest racing drivers have been training for one of the world's toughest endurance races, the Dubai 24 Hours. We've been following the highs and the lows as they attempt to make the grade in the world of professional motorsports. But unlike your average racing driver, there is one thing that makes these guys unique. They've all learned their craft on a PlayStation. This is the race to Dubai. Since 2008, GT Academy has been turning PlayStation gamers into racing drivers. The program has already produced three professional racing drivers since it began four years ago. It was a fantastic prize and, you, you know, the opportunity of my life to, to become a racing driver. Fifteen months ago, I was, I, I've never stepped into a race car, never been to a racetrack before. Truly really amazing and sometimes I still can't believe it. In 2012, the process started all over again, with one million gamers competing online for their place in each territory's national final. From the national finals, 288 gamers reached race camp at Silverstone, the home of British motorsport. But only three could have their dreams turned to reality. European GT Academy winner Wolfgang Reip, Russian GT Academy winner Mark Szczytski, and German GT Academy winner Peter Pizera. After winning GT Academy, the hard work really started for the 2012 graduates as they were subjected to a gruelling training programme designed to prepare them for their biggest challenge and their transition from gamer to racer at the Dubai 24 Hours. We just arrived in Dubai. I'm really, really, really happy and excited. So now I'm unpacking all my racing kit. We have here the racing shoes, my racing suit. Then, of course, the most important part for our head is uh, the helm. Seems like I'm a professional racing driver, you know. It's a good feeling. It's like a dream for me now. This is... The last step of the driver development program, but I hope it is the beginning of a long story. Now before they make their way to the track, Wolfgang, Peter and Mark took some time to relax and have a look around Dubai. Dubai is really a crazy city. It's uh, very impressive. I think we are all very lucky to have the opportunity to fly around the world, see different cultures. In my country now, uh, minus 20 degrees, uh, here, white sand, sea, sun, and it's perfect for me. It's difficult to realize what's happening now because when we won the GT Academy, uh, we know that the final point of the program is Dubai, and it seemed far. And now we are here. Yeah, really incredible. Yeah, racing driver is part of my life now, and I don't want to do anything else. I, I cannot do anything else, to be honest. One guy who knows exactly how Wolfgang, Peter and Mark are feeling at the moment is the first GT Academy graduate, Lucas Ordinez. Since winning GT Academy, Lucas has competed in the LMP class at the World Endurance Championship, tested and raced the innovative new race car, the Delta Wing, and had second at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. The Dubai 24 Hours is a very special race, no? Uh, it's totally different than what we race in Europe and America or Asia. The conditions are 
are really hot and I love it, no? The atmosphere is great, uh, more than 80 cars on track. My first experience here in Dubai uh, was when I, when I won a GT Academy uh, in 2008. And then I compete here in 2009, January. It was the, my first big race. I was really under pressure, no? I felt the nerves, I felt the, the tension of, of racing for first time. I have uh, great memories from, from that race. I think that the guys uh, this year will be under pressure because they know how far is GT Academy going, the, the past results. Uh, last year here in Dubai, uh, we finished third in the podium in, in a full GT Academy driver lineup. But they look like uh, calm and, and relaxed and that they, they've done this forever and, and it's impressive. I think we can finish in the podium for sure and why not winning the, the race? Well, before anyone can think about a podium, the drivers, team principal and mechanics have a lot of work ahead of them. We arrived today uh, on Dubai's track. It's the first time we are here. Uh, the containers with the cars arrived today as well with the, all the team. So we are very pleased to see the team again. So the first two days are really sort of setup days, except for the fact that we do have the opportunity to test the cars on the track. To be here after four months of preparation is really a good feeling. We only saw the track in virtual, now it's in reality, and uh, amazing feeling. Since the day they won, this is what they won, to come here and drive. The 24-hour race will take place on the 5.39km Dubai Grand Prix circuit, and Lucas takes some time to remind himself of the track. The start here is amazing, you know, more than 80 cars at the same time, flat out, but at the same time we are focused on not make a mistake and, and, and have a contact in the first corner of the 24 hours. Hard braking, this is a very slow corner, uh, downhill, so the, the visibility is not perfect. And then we come here to a, a quite a tight corner where all the cars have uh, some issues to manage the, the overtaking. Here in the back straight, we are reaching more than 230, 240 k's. Uh, it's very important to be focused on the, on the cars you have ahead. After the back straight, we have a very slow corner uh, where you have to be really committed and brake really hard. So, so uh, very important where you can earn a lot of time, but you have to be focused on the life of the brakes. We are in the middle of the desert, so uh, the track is really dirty and the wind brings all the sand again. So the track is changing all the time, so it's quite easy to lose the grip of the car and, and to have a, a quite, a, um, quite a moment, no? One of the most challenging bits will be, will be the, the, the conditions. Very hot inside, they've been training in, in UK, which is cold weather, and here the, the conditions are quite hard. But I think they are ready. GT Academy has done a good job training them for, for this race and, and I'm sure things will, will get well. Driver Lucas Ordonez will be the number one driver in car 127, meaning that along with Bob and the engineers, he will be responsible for the setup of the car and reporting any issues it may be having. We were having quite a few issues, but it's normal, no? It's brand new, everything is, uh, the engine, chassis, everything is, is new in this car, so, so uh, we are trying to solve these uh, little problems and to fix it for, for tomorrow and to have more, more time tomorrow on track. In the second GT Academy car, the number one driver will be Alex Buncombe, a very experienced endurance driver. He is the regular pro driver for RJN Motorsport and has helped bring on all the previous GTA winners. I went out first in the car just, just to make sure everything was okay, do a few installation laps. 
um, bed some of the brakes in that we'll have to change during the race. Um, did a couple of laps and the car balance felt felt good. Alex's car was perfect. He, that's when he did a really fast time. With Lucas, his car, the, the gear selection problem occurred quite early on. Um, but when that was sorted, he was very comfortable with his time. So all the drivers got plenty of laps, got to know the circuit properly at racing speed. But uh, one car at the end wasn't in use. The test session highlighted some problems with the throttle and engine of car 127, so the mechanics get to work to get the car ready for the practice session. Along with the RJN Motorsport team, the 2012 GT Academy graduates are joined in Dubai by their driving mentors, Rob Jenkinson and Christian Van. Heat and sand are two things they haven't really experienced this year, um, doing most of their racing in the UK. You know, to begin with, it's going to be dusty, but you know, we're expecting uh, hopefully some dry weather and. And once you know, the cars start going around, the track will clean up. Sheer volume of traffic is going to be a very hard. They're constantly looking around the mirrors, what's going on, for, looking for fast cars. So it's going to be very mentally taxing for them. All the hard work the drivers have put in over the last four months is to ensure they succeed in this race. The tension and pressure on them to prove they've done enough is building as they take to the track for a practice session. At this point, the car running good but it's really horrible traffic, it's crazy. I started my session and tried to find a free place for my lap, but it's unbelievable, big traffic. A little bit dangerous. There were several crashes, including some big ones, so I was very relieved that all our new graduates kept it on the island. All the guys have done a really good job. They've all been quite quick. We've all been within a few tenths of each other, which is exactly what we've been hoping for. And, uh, you know, any of our fears that they might not be able to rise to the occasion have been, uh, have been quashed. So I'm really happy. I feel well. Uh, the car feels good and safe. I like the track. The weather is good. Sometimes too good. Yeah, I'm just happy. For me, it's the best price in my life, you know, uh, to be here, to drive this car and be with team, all guys good. Coming up next time, the pressure really mounts as the 2012 GT Academy graduates and their teammates head into qualifying for the Dubai 24 hours. From virtual to real, Nissan presents GT Academy Race to Dubai.